let's get started. Just like that it's in it was actually a fairly straightforward process especially considering that i don't have a dedicated gpu going as you can see the cable management isn't amazing um but there's enough room back there to just kind of like wedge everything in and it's okay and you also have a bit of hangover space here on this side it's got a really interesting um ssd implementation because you kind of install it on the bottom of of that bracket there you can kind of see the ssd peeking out uh, but yeah, it was really easy to build in, except that motherboard mounting screw over there was a bit of a pain. Um, but, you know, it was not going to be considering the size of the case. But yeah, I actually think it's turned out pretty well. As you can see, the CPU fan has way more breathing room than it did in the other case because, well, the power supply is there now as opposed to right on top of it. Um, so yeah, hopefully it's going to enjoy not having to have unconsensual sex with the power supply the entire time it's in the case. Before we get into the actual benchmarks, and yes, there are going to be real benchmarks this time, I just want to point out that when I moved the PC over from the trash can build, I still had the throttling issues, except this time when I manually overclocked it, it didn't crash after 5 minutes. And then I was able to get some pretty good figures, I mean, it's pretty decent for 1080p low settings, you can pretty much play anything on the market with that, but it still bothered me that you couldn't just plug it straight into the motherboard and leave it to its own devices. You have to actually kind of manually change things before it's at all usable for gaming. Although, someone in the comments section of the Trash Can Build video pointed out that there's a newer version of the BIOS, which I was under the impression it had the newest version of the BIOS on, but with this new version of the BIOS, when left to its own devices, the CPU actually ran properly. And while I installed the BIOS, and it did, it worked perfectly. There was still some tiny frame drops, but it wasn't dropping from like 3.7 gigahertz to like 300 megahertz. It just loses about 500 megahertz, and you can barely notice that, and it doesn't happen nearly as regularly. Okay, so with that disclaimer out of the way, and thank you very much, Victor, for your contribution. Uh, let's get into the benchmarks.
So when looking at the limited benchmarking that I did with it, you can see that it's a pretty capable low settings 1080p performer. Now the thing is, I didn't dive into too much detail with the CPU because every single YouTuber, oh, I've lost the screen again. Every YouTuber on YouTube has done an extensive set of tests on it. So you would probably know by now whether it would fit your specific use case. Although what was quite interesting with the Cinebench score is that it performs really well for kind of multi-threaded stuff. So it means it's gonna be pretty good for productivity, especially considering its price. Now, the thing with these APUs is they have a lot of very good press on the internet. People are very happy with them. But the thing is, I feel there's one important thing that people don't deal with in enough detail when talking about these APUs. Now, before I get to that, let's see who this APU would work for. I think the best person to buy this is somebody who's an experienced builder and who knows their way around hardware. Somebody who's probably building this as a third PC that they're going to use as an HD PC for that use. And for you, it's great. It's very good value for money and it's a very capable chip considering what it is. And you can put it in a tiny case like the Chopin and it's, it's, it's awesome. It's a great bit of technology. But there is a group of people who I think shouldn't buy them. And that's the beginner builder, somebody who's building their first ever PC. Yes, it seems like really good value. It seems like a great first time entry into PC gaming. But the thing is, it's a difficult system to build because you're not going to be able to just plug it straight into a motherboard and have it work the way it should. You have to research the right memory that'll work at the right speed for it. Once you've installed it, it doesn't work. It, there's weird frame drops and all kinds of stuff that you have to install new BIOSes on, even on motherboards that say that they support the thing 100%. And that's just disheartening as a first time builder. If you put this thing together and have massive frame drops while trying the new PUBG or whatever, you're not going to want to carry on. You're going to probably sell it and then buy an Xbox because having to install a new BIOS is terrifying even for me and I've done it several times and it still kind of freaks me out. Which I think very neatly brings me to the conclusion for this video. There are great CPUs that are kind of tainted by the fact that they're a little bit more difficult to use than they should be. And if you're a beginner builder, maybe head for something more along the lines of an i3-8100 paired with a GTX 1050. A couple months ago, that would have been a very bad recommendation, but the prices of GPUs are slowly coming down and they're getting to a point where it's actually reasonable buying something like that. And with the dedicated GPU, the dedicated GTX, 1050, you're going to get way better performance. Yes, you're going to be spending a bit more money, but you have to keep in mind the fact with the AMD systems, you have to buy very expensive memory to get it to work as well as it should. Whereas with the Intel system, you can just kind of plop anything into it and it works well. So yeah, I think the actual price difference between an i3 GTX 1050 combo and a 2400G won't be that huge, but the performance difference will be way bigger. That obviously doesn't take the 2200G into account, but you know, it's a bit cheaper, but also a bit worse. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, do like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. And yes, until the next time, bye-bye.